Hello and welcome to episode six of this Growth Strategist chat series. I'm delighted to be joined today by Terry Jackson. Terry, how are you? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm good. And uh, it's great to meet you. And we just had a little chat there. And so you're the founder and the chief people inspirer of JCG Consulting Group. You're an M&A integration expert. You're an executive coach. And you're also highly accoladed, including Thinkers 360, Top 20 and 30 around culture, change management and the future of work. So there's a huge amount there. And, and I'm really looking forward to chatting with you. And um, so maybe let's just start the first five minutes, just a little bit of background as to you, your background, your, your career, and what do you focus on today? Okay, well, well, well thanks for asking. Um, you know, my background and career has been pretty much um, business. Uh, I've been fortunate to be one of the people who majored in business in college, who ended up working actually in business and not having to find something totally different. Yeah. Uh, I've been in a different, in a lot of different capacities, from sales and sales management and leadership to operations, operations management and leadership. So I understand the full gamut of what it means to actually operate a business from revenue generation to process uh, improvement and control. You know, my career has been prob probably 20 to 25 years in corporate America. Uh, some working for Fortune nine uh, type companies. Yeah. And so I've been very fortunate uh, in that. Here in my business at uh, JCG, we work with organizations by challenging the organizational performance paradigm, one, yeah. and two, by looking at misaligned organizations and individuals to get them in better alignment with the, with the organization so we can improve performance. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So, and... You know, so in terms of uh, what are you seeing in the workplace in terms of good practice in organizations around alignment and, and not so good practices? What, what are you encountering on a day-to-day -day basis? What sort of examples of bad alignment and, and good alignment? Well, well you know, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, bad alignment is always those organizations where people create their own silos. Yeah. Their department is the most important important department within the organization and yeah. not being able to see that their department is a part of a system yeah. called an organization. Yeah, yeah. So, and a lot of that begins with the lack of communication or the lack of clarity in communication because yeah. the lack of clarity enables a great deal of misinterpretations as to what the message actually exactly. is. Exactly. So, Communication is the key to alignment, and that's where we first start with the communication process. I, I agree 100%. Like I, in my career, I've spent life as a private practice lawyer and a corporate lawyer for Dell um, and yeah. Xilinx, American multinationals, and I was a CEO of an American company in Australia. And, and the last seven, eight years, I've been my own boss, a coach, consultant, etc. And I was always really frustrated in organizations. I mean, one great organization was Xilinx, okay? But, but in most organizations, I just see, they seem to be suboptimal most of the time because um, state employees don't own the company. So they don't really care about the outcomes and they care less because they're kept in the dark, because there's lack of communication and there's lack, lack of connection, there's silos. So it's no surprise that companies are suboptimized, you know, whereas, right. whereas, you know, my own business, it's me, right? So I, I'm the CEO, the CMO, the COO. And so I know everything. I know how many dollars are coming in each day. And so I'm completely bought in. So is, is there a way for big organizations to operate in a way more like, you know, entrepreneurs that how do they make sure that communication filters through that, that they get rid of silos are, are there quick fixes or does this always depend on the organization and also the willingness of the leaders you know that's a good question because <laughs> uh, you mentioned at the end quick fixes right yeah you know oftentimes uh, the challenges that they face have been created over a number of years yeah yeah and we'd like to think that there are quick fixes around to say what's on your mind you know, uh, be tactful about what you say and how you say it, but say it. But it's interesting how some cultures uh, promote communication 
or authentic communication. Yeah. Um, some people think that if they withhold information, it gives them power, authority, and control. Yeah. And so even though we would say it's very easy to say, speak your mind, it's difficult. Yeah. Right. And, you know, it, it all begins at the top. It begins with the CEO, right? Yeah. And then when you're talking about messages and communication, you really have to take a look at the chief marketing officer and how they promote different narratives for their organization and, and mm -hmm. how empowered people are to promote the narrative and how much accountability rests there. So, yeah. you know, having a, a great communication process and understanding it is, is, is very helpful. But culture, again, drives all of that. So there are some quick fixes, but they're not some quick fixes if you, you understand what I'm saying. I understand. And it's interesting because you, you mentioned authentic leadership. And I, I interviewed Gordon Treadgold today, who has written, it's called The Fast Methodology in Organizations. He's, a, he's an English, Belgian-based, but English, um, another guru, right? And and he made a point that I've never thought about before. And you'll probably smile when I say this. He said, um, you know, somebody like Donald Trump or Bolsonaro or Putin or Boris Johnson, in their mind, they're authentic leaders, right? And people who support them are, I think they're authentic leaders. But are they useful, authentic leaders? That's another question. <laughs> you know? So there's That's a difference right. between you can be an authentic leader, but you might be no good or you might be bad, you know, so... And I've never thought of it like that. So I see you smiling. You know? <laughs> yes, yes. I, I agree with that. You know, I use, I use something very similar when we talk about results, right? People ask me, you know, what is leadership? I say, well, the definition of leadership to me is just result. You have to be able to drive yeah. results. But I take it to another level when I say desired results. That's the key. Yeah. From results to the, because results can be anything, right? Results can be that as an organization, result is we weren't profitable this quarter. Yeah. Desired result is you were profitable this quarter. Yeah, yeah. Desired result is we're reaching the target market that we have uh, decided we want to go after. The result is maybe we reached the target market, but it's not consistent with who we want to attract to our product or our services. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the desired result is, you know, we want one billion dollars in 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 revenue. Yeah. Uh, right. The result is we only created five hundred thousand in revenue. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So so we we're always going to produce a result, and that result may be good or not so good. Yeah. The desired result. It's what we aimed for. We hit the target yeah, yeah. of what we actually aimed for. Yeah. So that's a, a whole different paradigm to live within and to say we want results. It is. It is. So just moving on. So I've written an article called Gender Balance for Better Business. And, and I'm, I'm talking to you about a project that we're looking at rolling out around equality in September. And you know, you know, there's 7 billion people on planet Earth and we're all on this tiny little rock together and we're all completely equal specks on this planet. There's 7 billion specks on this planet. And, <laughs> and yet I suspect not, not every organization sees it that, that way. And, you know, um, it's so important that everybody in organizations is, are, at, to use a metaphor, are at the same starting gate, are given the same opportunity to start. But clearly that's not the real world. There's all sorts of issues. But, but what do you see in your work? Do you see examples of good practice in organizations? And do you, see, you must see, without getting political or naming names, but do you see some really negative practices that are blocking that starting gate equality? What, what are your overall feelings or senses or observations? You know, that's an excellent question because this is something we've been dealing with a long time. Yeah. Almost since the beginning of time. Uh, really, to, to, you know, yeah. and, 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 you know, what I see is a lot of good rhetoric, a yeah. conversation around the topic. Yeah. But I don't see a lot of good implementation and execution against it. Yeah. Because it always goes back to power, right? Yeah. And when I look at this, 
and I look for the common denominator as to where the problem lies, there's only one place where the problem lies. And I've had this conversation many times. And when you're talking about gender, you're talking about male oppressing yep. a female employee, right? Yep, yep. So you, you begin to deal with the fragility of the male psyche. Yeah, it is. And, 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 and to be very specific, the fragility of the white male psyche. Absolutely. And, 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 and don't forget, sorry to interrupt, bullies are always the most scared people. They're the scared Absolutely. People. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And so when we look at, especially, let me just bring it to the States, the United yeah. States. Yeah. When we look at oppression, we look at white men who've oppressed even their white women. Yeah, absolutely. Wives. Absolutely. Women weren't able to vote here until 1929. Yeah. And then when you, when you, uh, Black Americans into that equation, you know, we're talking about the 60s. Yeah. If, if you want to go back to the Native American population, yeah. let's, we can see what white males did to yeah. the Native Americans. So we have to try to figure out, and, and, and what I'm going to say, white males have to try to figure out, why is it and what is it about them yeah. that enables them to want to exclude any and everything that doesn't look like them? Yeah, I know. When, in fact, I did a little bit of research on how many women were in the United States and how many men were in the United States. Because I often heard there were more women than men. Yeah. In my research, there are only 10 states, only 10 states in the United States where men outnumber women. So that means there are 40 mm. states in the United States where women outnumber men, yet men maintain the power and control in, corp in the corporate setting as well as in the government setting and yeah. most most industry. Yeah. And the question is, why is that? Yeah. And it shouldn't be that way. And, and I think that women outnumber men across the world. But yep. men are the ones who are in, in, in power and control. So yeah. maybe that hunter-gatherer kind of mentality is yeah. what is uh, enabling this whole gender inequity to take place. I, you know, I think you're right. And when I researched that article, and it could have been an article on racial balance as well, as well as gender, mm -hmm. but, but it goes right back to hundreds, if not thousands of years ago in Europe, right? And Spain and yes. Portugal and the UK and Belgium and the Netherlands, they're all as guilty, right? And basically the pillars of society, the military, the, the white military, the white church, the white, um, uh, you know, business community was was basically 100% white male, right? And, yes. and, and hundreds of years later, it's still trickling, amazingly still trickling through the system. Uh, but, it, but it was interesting, you know, I had an experience, I'm kind of going off here, but it was, it's great to share this. Uh, at one stage in Australia, I was privileged, I was the CE, consulting CEO for the Indigenous Tourism Council of Western mm -hmm. Australia, Aboriginal business, right? Mm -hmm. Native. Yes. Australian people. Me as a white European guy who's living in Australia, and it was a huge privilege, right? And I and I loved the role, right? And I'll never forget, I was up in the Kimberley in the north, the bush, the north part of, of Australia, which is a bit like, you know, the swamp lands of Louisiana kind of thing, yes, you know? Yes. And I was up there with the chairman, Tan Donovan, and she's an Aboriginal woman. And I was kind of banging on the and we we're middle of nowhere, like middle of nowhere, like nobody around for hours. And I said to her, Tan, I feel really guilty. I'm a white man. I'm the CEO of the Aboriginal Tourism Council. And she stopped, right? And she said, get out of the car. And, and I thought, gonna, what's going to happen here, right? And she said, take, take your shoes and socks off. And she said, stand in the stream, right, with me and say nothing. And then, so I did this. And I thought, what's going to happen here, right? And she said, Simon, and I'll never forget these words. She said, Simon, don't you think us black fellas deserve the best CEO? Mm. Not, not a color thing, the best CEO. Mm -hmm. And I'd mm -hmm. never thought, and it still sheds, sends shivers down my spine, you know. And mm -hmm. so there's, mm -hmm. there's always another way of looking at things, you know. Yes, that was, absolutely. That was cool, Don't absolutely. You think that, that was cool wasn't it? That was very cool. And, and what that gets to is what I've been talking about since COVID-19 started and since the George Floyd situation. And that is, how can we get back to being human? Yeah. How can we get back to humanity? So exactly. what she's really saying is, you're the best human 
yes. for the position exactly. at that time. At that yeah, time, absolutely. perfect. So just moving on in the last five minutes or so, so the world is in a real circuit breaker period and it's a tough year, okay? But, but, but good things always come out of tough times. And what, what do you see are uh, maybe some of the positive things in terms of how leadership might change or how coaching for leadership might be impacted with what's happening around COVID and, and everything right now? What, what do you see as potentially being changed by this period? That's, 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 that's a great question because there are a lot of executive coaches out there trying to figure this thing out right now. <laughs> a lot of leaders trying to figure this thing out right now yeah. because we are in uncertain times, right? We're in, mm-hmm. we're in times of ambiguity and uncertainty. And what I'll say is, and what I've been saying is this, we're at the intersection of instinct and intellect. Yeah. Being at that intersection, the greatest tool we have in our toolkit is counterintelligence. Excuse me, counterintuitiveness. Yeah, yeah. Our counterintuitiveness, right? Yeah. Yes. What we don't want to do is revert back to old habits because they get us stuck. So what we have to have is the courage to move forward, manage that that movement forward. Yeah. Take risk. If you make some missteps, be able to course correct in real time. But you have to keep moving forward. You can't stop. And you have to accelerate your pace as you move forward. There's an acronym that I like to use around this particular situation that we're in at this given time. And and, and mind you, we're not going back to where we were. It's never going to happen. Our rules of of engagement are different. So I use the acronym called ADAPT. A-D-A-P-T, ADAPT, right? So you you have to first anticipate you got to be great at anticipation. You have to be great at driving the organization. Once you anticipate and you understand what's coming your way or how you're going to lead the way, you, you drive it. And then you accelerate. While you're driving, you put your foot on the accelerator and you move with speed, right? Mm-hmm. And then you partner. You partner and collaborate with others with, with, within, within the team and yep. other organizations out, outside of your, your organization. And then... Trust is the key that brings it all together. So you have to be able to trust because look, we're in the same boat together, yep. right? Yep. We got to trust each other because uncertainty, ambiguity, what they really need is rhythm and routine yeah. and able to resilience. You have to be resilient. So yeah, absolutely. leaders have to be resilient, they have to have a mindset of innovation, creativity, because we, we have embarked upon uh, uncommon times, times we've never seen before. Yeah. But you can't stand still because if you stand still, that means you're moving backward. You exactly. got to move forward. You have to move forward. And you have to be confident in your movement. Yes. I agree. No, that's profound. Adapt is really profound. And no, that's very profound. So if you were going to, to wrap up, if you were going to whisper two or three words of wisdom to the younger Terry, so Terry, when you were 20, right, before you set off on this career that you have, to protect yourself, to maximize your career, to, to give yourself the best chances, what two or three words would you have whispered in your own ear? Mm, great question. Stay connected to humanity. That's one. Yeah. Uh, two, it would be be authentic, be your authentic self. Yeah. And there's always opportunity. <laughs> That's good. There's That's always good. opportunity. It, it just, again, as you said earlier, it depends on how you look at the situation. It is. For some, when you look at the situation, they see it as dire straits, right? Yeah. Others see nothing but opportunity as to how they can take this particular yeah. opportunity and make the best of it. So it's all about your perspective. Perspective is the key. Perspective is the key. And I've shown by this podcast series, you know, I started this because somebody said you should about three months ago. And I've been amazed. I've now had access, including to you, to 30 odd global gurus, right? All of whom have given their time, right? And, and it's great for the perception of me, but also I'm learning a lot. And then, as I mentioned before we started recording, there are another, other initiatives coming out of this. And I nearly didn't do these. I thought, initially i thought this was a waste of time but basically it's just connected amazing people and then 
part of my inspiration for doing this was that, you know, I come from a working class background, right? And there are so many people who are disenfranchised of all yes. color, right? Of all color, disenfranchised, yes. all shapes and sizes, either financially disenfranchised or intellect or confidence disenfranchised, mainly confidence, yes. you know? And yes. yet there are great thought leaders like you and they're not connected. And so what I'm trying to do in my own little way is to connect the two. And you never know what opportunities come out of that. So that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's been, there's always opportunity. There's always opportunity. So I, I've loved this chat, Terry. And so how do people find out more about you and your work? Well, thank you. Uh, you know, I'm very active on LinkedIn, so you yep. can definitely find me out on LinkedIn posting and following others because I'm a learner. I'm a lifelong student. Yep. So I go out and I learn from other gurus as well. Um, you'll find me, uh, you can go to my website, which is JCG consultinggroup.com yeah and you know if you like you can email me at terry at jcg consultinggroup.com and i'll respond that's perfect thanks terry i've really enjoyed that and 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 take care and, and we'll talk again about the thing in september and thanks so much for your time thank you thank you very much thank you bye-bye 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 bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye.